welcome back to the second lecture series of uh, learning theory of automata and formal languages. So, this is your video number 2 and uh, in the previous lecture we have learned about the basic introduction related to automata and we have learned few terminologies like uh, alphabet, strings, languages okay? and we have seen certain representations also. But during that particular video we have uh, discussed all these terminologies, but uh, we have not discussed the, uh, the, 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 the concept of automaton in two different types. Okay? For that we will be starting off with that, con uh, that particular slide and then we will work with the today's topic. So, today's topic is your deterministic finite automata that is known as in short form it is called as DFA, its definition and its representation. So, this is our today's topic. So, it, this is this was the topic that I was discussing with uh, you all, we have, we have skipped this particular slide in order to make you understand the concept of alphabet, the concept of string, the concept of language. But if we, uh, we have also understood the concept of automaton, okay, it is an abstract machine, okay, it is a concept of an abstract machine of a particular computer okay, or you can say overall machine, the basic platform or you can say a theoretical concept. Okay. So, in order to understand this automaton, we need to understand what are its categories. Okay. We can define this automaton into two types, okay. that is what we are trying to discuss with you all, it is about configuration. Okay. The first configuration is that automaton can act as a recognizer. Okay. Recognizer, the term itself it says recognizing something. What is that something? That something is nothing but strings. Where did you got the strings? You got the strings from the language. Okay. So, this is a simple hierarchy that you got the language, from that language you got the strings and from that strings you got the machine. I hope this is the clear cut idea. Language is defined or submitted by the user. I am the user, I am submitting a language to you. You need to logically think over that uh, language and you need to identify that yes, these are the possible strings acceptable from the language and from that you need to design a machine. So, after designing the machine, that machine can act in two ways. First way is recognizer that it that means it can recognize that particular string and second thing is that generator means it can generate those strings. After accepting it can generate, this is the clear cut idea, got it? Few more terminologies are there, for recognizer we generally say as an acceptor, recognizer you are recognizing or some way or the other you are accepting those strings, so that is why the same thing. What happens in that scenario? You have defined, you have submitted the input string from the language first step, then the machine will accept the language over this machine, over this string. Suppose you have given A B A, okay, this is the user, give, this is the string given by the user. Now the machine will analyze over the language and try to recognize that whether this particular string belongs to that language or not. If it accepts or if it recognizes the language, that string, then what it will give? Either it will give yes or it will give no. No means what? That particular string does not belong to the language. Yes means what? That particular string given by the user belongs to the particular language. So, this is known as your recognizer. Second thing is that generator or enumerator or transducer. What happens here? It is a simple thing. Generator, you are just simply generating the string. You are not concentrating now to accept or recognize. You are just generating the string. So, what you will do? Input string will be there. From the input string, the automata will produce the output because you have, but at the first stage already it has accepted, okay, then it has produced the output and then finally, the output string will be delivered to the user. These are the general configuration of automaton. I hope something you have understood from it because these small, small pieces of understanding will let you know to the clear cut idea of its applications. Okay. Now, let us go with the next slide. This is all about your first slide. Uh, in second lecture that is finite automata. Okay? But before going into that, we have understood the concept of automata. We have understood this particular topic automata. What is the meaning of finite? Finite means that you are concentrating on finite amount of strings in that particular language. It cannot go beyond finite, that is it cannot go with infinite part. Okay? But yes, some or the other we have to deal with it. So, we will discuss later on that how infinite 
part can also be done, but some of the other memory constraints will be there. So, a lot of things will come across, but that we will discuss later on. Okay. Now, let us understood the terminology finite automata. Finite automata are mainly used for pattern recognition. So, dear students, and the first point you come across with the application. Now, this is just like a repository. You put into piggy bank right now for that for the, for the time being. I have taken that I have understood that finite automata is used in pattern recognition, but how? For that you need to understand finite automata. Okay? For the time being, you just keep it in your mind that yes, one of the application is your pattern recognition. Okay? Now let us discuss what is finite automata, how the finite automata can be constructed. Clear? Second point is that now the few of the things you should keep in mind. It takes the string of symbol as input. This already we have seen in the previous slide. It takes the string of a symbol as input and changes its state accordingly. I told you in previous video, if you have skipped the previous video, you can go to the previous video also. There I have mentioned that input will be the one part, after that some states will be there and after that what? Some output will be there. So, this is the general hierarchy of a machine. Okay? These states generally define what? the processing of the content, the processing of the inputs. Okay? Got it? So, that means these states will be representing the processing part. So, that is why first of all we will take input as the string and then processing will be done based on the states. Okay? Then when the desired symbol is found, when the desired symbol will be accepted, then the transition occurs. Transition means from one state to another state the process will go. See, these processing, these states I have mentioned, this is nothing but one one state okay? and from one state to another state there will be transitions okay? and it will keep on going until it reaches the final state. So, final state will be the one which is the accepting state which will define you that yes, I have analyzed this string and I have read the string and I have accepted the string and now it is completely final to produce or to submit it to the end user. Clear? Next, at the time of transition, the automata can either move to the next state or stay in the same state. This, these things we will discuss. Okay? And finally, finite automata have two states, one is your accept state and the other one is your reject state. Okay? This accept state and reject state we will learn once we will start constructing the finite automata. But for the time being, for the, from the terminology you can analyze that accept means what? The state where the string is being read and accepted. Reject means what? The string has been read, but this is not submitting to the language. So, it will be going to the reject state. That is it. Clear? Now, we'll move to the next slide. The formal description of finite automata. This is like a very, very common thing. Uh, the formal description will be asked to you in your upcoming examinations, also in competitive exams also. So, generally finite automata is defined with the help of five tuples. Five tuples. Okay? Five tuples are what? Q, sigma, q0, f and delta. Okay, these are you can say these are some of the characteristics with the help of which you can define a finite automata. Okay? Q means what? Finite number of states. Whatever states is required to fulfill the uh, language description that is nothing but the finite number of states present in a finite automata. Okay? Always remember we are discussing about finite, so finite will be there. Then sigma is nothing but the finite set of input symbols. It can be 0, 1, it can be A, B, it can be A, B, C. It depends on what user has been giving in the particular language. Clear? Next Q0 is the initial state. Okay, now this is a new thing to you. I will let you know. Definitely, if you remember logically, you need to start a particular program. You need to initialize that, right? So, initialize means what? You need to take an initial state for that to initialize that particular processing. That is it. Okay, and definitely, in order to accept, we need what? A final position. So, that means a final state should also be there. And then finally, this is the part which you need to understand thoroughly, transition function. Because transition function is the one which generally describes the movement of the string from one state to another state, how this particular transition is going on. So, that we need to understand once we will start constructing the finite automata. Okay? So, for the timing, we are marking this as a question mark. Okay? Now, let us go to the, these are the different formal or description of a finite automata. Let us go with the next slide. This is the general finite automata model. What the model says, directly I am going into the diagram. 
okay you can content you can note down these points if you want we need two things one is the input tip where the string will be there this is the input tip where the string is there and one finite control machine this finite control machine will wh what it will do it will it will have a tape reader okay tape reader which will simply read the particular string one by one and it will try to recognize that that particular string belongs to the language or not if it is not then it will go to the reject state if it is accepted then it will go to the accepting state as simple as that so definitely in order to understand the configuration model of a finite automata we need two data structures one is your finite tape oh sorry input tape and the other one is your finite control input tape to store the uh, particular string and finite control is the one with the help of which there is a tape reader which will read the particular string and it will analyze whether that particular string belongs to the language if it is yes then it will go to the accepting state if it is no it will go to the reject state clear now let us go with the next one that is your types of finite automata see here i have given a half part of types actually if we summarize the entire concept we are having finite automata with two categories i haven't mentioned in this slide but i am just giving you a short description finite automata with output and the second one is your finite automata without output okay without output so these things i will let you know later on with output we will be learning two machines okay one is your mure mure machine and the other one is your mili machine and finite automata without output is nothing but this one i hope it is clear to you all right finite automata without output this is just the definitions you need to understand once we are done with all these machines you will be able to clear it up okay so finite automata without output are nothing but two types mainly deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite automata and one more type is there which i have not mentioned it is not required but yes it it will come in the examination and epsilon nfa it's a part of nfa only but it will comprises of non uh, empty strings also clear so this is the hierarchy of general hierarchy of a finite automata with output without output with output we will categorize into mure and mili machine without output we can only categorize into two types the dfa and nfa and also epsilon nfa dfa means deterministic finite automata nfa means non deterministic finite automata these terms you just keep in mind i will now go with first dfa we will try to construct a dfa then we will jump to nfa once you have understood how to construct a dfa it will be very very simple for you to construct an nfa okay within a fraction of seconds you will be able to design the nfa clear now let us go with the concept of dfa deterministic finite automata see the first terminology says everything deterministic it is determined yes whatever input symbols i am having i am determined that both the input symbols both means i am suppose i am taking an example let me take an example as two input symbols okay 0 and 1 so these are the alphabets i am having two input symbols 0 and 1 now deterministic finite automata what it does is that it is determined that yes i will concentrate on 0 i will also concentrate on 1 and i will try to send these 0 and 1 from one state to another state exactly one not more than one got it that means it is determined that yes i will send that uh, um, uh, that input string whatever input symbols are there it may be one it may be two it may be three it may be four but for all the input symbols i will try to do a transition exactly once not more than once okay so that means it is it is it is it is stick on to one static part okay so that means first point say dfa refers to deterministic finite automata this is small definition deterministic refers to the uniqueness of the computation once you are done with the dfa part nfa doesn't have any restriction you can play with these input stream strings n number of times more, more than one number of transitions more than n number of transitions if you doesn't want to put the transition that also define so it's perfectly fine so that means nfa is completely uh, like uh, you are free from any kind of restrictions okay in dfa there is only one path this is a very important point in dfa there is only one path for a specific input for a specific input means say suppose i am talking about this zero okay only one path 
for a specific input from the current state to the next state. That is what I told you that transition should be exactly once, not more than once okay? or not less than one also. It should be exactly one. It may be, uh, now I will let you know how this transition will happen because right now you might be in a state of bifurcation mind that what is going on. Okay? So, you just keep in these definitions with you all. I will show you how to construct it. Okay? Next point is that DFA does not accept the null moves. That means I have told you see there are two transitions 0 and 1. Okay? If I say 0 that means this is one symbol. If I say 1 this is another symbol. That means DFA is determined to send exactly one transition, exactly one path for both the symbols. That means we cannot have any null symbols, correct? So, null moves does not accept it by DFA. So, these are some characteristics of a DFA, clear? Now, we we'll let us go with the next topic that is your formal description of a DFA. This is exactly similar to what we have learned about finite automata formal description. All the five tuples we will be having, only the difference that exactly happens with the transition function. So, this is the one which generally defines the difference between DFA and NFA. Rather than that all are same. Q uh, finite set of set, uh, finite set of states, okay? uh, sigma finite set of input alphabets, Q naught is the initial state, F is the final state. Okay? Now, this Q naught F, now you uh, one more time, one more thing I want to remember, uh, wanting to introduce that, Q naught here it is mentioned you can use A also, you can use B also, any alphabets you can use it. Okay? It is not mandatory that every time initial state will be represented by Q naught only. No, you can use any alphabets. F similarly for F also, final state. You can use X also, you can use Q F also, whatever you want. Okay? Okay? So, this is all about the five tuples, only the difference lies where the transition function. Now, let us understand what the transition function is all about. See, here the transition function defines this particular concept. What is mean, what is, what is the meaning of it? Here the transition function says that Q, that is the total number of states will be looked with what? The total number of input alphabets, correct? And where it will go? It will go to the next state or maybe to the present state. That is the simple, that is as simple as that for and DFA. Now, similarly, when we will discuss about NFA, the, we will discuss about the transition function for the same. Clear? So, this is all about your transition function for the DFA. Now, let us go some simpler notations that we will require for constructing a DFA. First one is your transition diagram and the second one is your transition table. Okay? These are the two different ways by which you can uh, construct a DFA or you can represent a DFA. Okay? If we talk about transition diagram, it will look like this. It is just an example I am giving here and if it is a transition table, it will looks like this. Okay? So, where you will be having what a uh, particular set of inputs, particular set of outputs or uh, so sorry states. Okay? Now, we will look into the transition diagram. In the transition diagram, we will first check what are the symbols required here. I will just define you what are the symbols and, uh, and the representations required. Later on, we will construct the finite automata DFA. So, each state in Q is represented by a circle, clear? Next, a directed edge from state Q or to a state P labeled as this one. Suppose this is, this is, this is the meaning of what I am just writing here. A Q is a state and another state is a state say P and directed edge will be there. This is, the no, this is known as your transition. This directed edge is said to be the transition. This transition defines that some particular alphabet or some particular symbol is being transferred from state Q to state P. How? That will define with the language part. Okay? Next comes, in the initial state, there is an arrow with no source. This representation will also show you how initial state can be represented. Clear? So, this is the initial state. If we define the final state, final state is indicated like this. Clear? So, this is all about the simple representations of a transition diagram. With the help of these representations, we will try to construct the NFA, DFA or NFA. Okay? Let us go with the transition table. Now, in the transition table, always remember that it is a, com it is a combination of, it is a, it is a table column of, column and row combination of total number of states into total number of input alphabets like this. Okay? So, this is the table. 
see here this delta actually delta I will let you know later on this is actually an output alphabet, but here these are the states ok, these are the states ok and these are the input alphabets, input alphabets uh, represented by sigma ok, this is the combination of defining a transition table. Now, what it says that q naught on seeing input alphabet A it is going to another state say q 1, this is what is it, it is actually means. Similarly, q naught on seeing B it is going to q 2. So, generally we will try to focus on the transition diagram first and then we will try to construct a transition table that we can do once we take an example where you will be given a language from that language you need to design a const construct a machine uh, it may be a DFA, it may be NFA, it may be Mure, it may be Mele, it may be anything ok. So, this is all about your transition table and transition diagram ok. Now, coming to the next slide, next slide says what is the processing concept of a DFA? Processing concept of a DFA generally says the same thing which I have already mentioned in your DFA example that you will be given a language based on that language you need to first recognize that what are the strings that can be accepted or rejected by the finite automata and based on that if it is accepted or rejected then we will be having certain states and these with the help of these states we will be producing certain transitions and then finally what? if it is accepted or re recognized then it will go to what a final state or if it is rejected it will go to what a reject state. So, that is why it is having two concept over here one is your accepted part one is your rejected part. So, you can pause the video you can think of it that what is the meaning of accepted, accepted means analyzed, recognized, accepted and then finally, the string is reaching the final accepting state or final state, rejected means what analyzed, check the language check the string, but it is not accepting. So, it will go to where? It will go to a reject state. So, this is the general concept or says as processing of a strings by DFA ok. Next go to the last example, last slide of our today's example that is your construct a DFA from the string this one ok. Now, this is a very simple thing I will just show you how to construct a DFA, but proper way we will discuss in the next video ok. It is showing that A, A, B, B, A. How to define this particular scene? See, as simple as that, I will not construct a DFA now, I will just simply construct a finite automata, ok. I will not construct a DFA. In the next video, we will learn, I will just simply construct a finite automata. See, there will be an initial state, say suppose Q0 is the initial state, ok. Then I will discuss this particular string, how the particular automata will design. See, this is nothing but I have defined this particular strings into this category ok. And if you if you remember the general configuration of finite automata, this is nothing but what an input tape correct. Now, what we need? We need another configuration that is a finite control which will have an input reader which will try to read the strings one by one and then finally, reach the accepting state clear. I need a particular state say final state. So, I am just taking as qf as the final state. So, initial state I have taken and final state I have taken. Now, simply what I need to do? I need to simply read the particular strings one by one from the input tape. So, first string is what? First string is a correct. So, that means there will be a transition from q0 to another state say suppose q1 and what I have read? I have read a. Now, the input reader will move from here to here. What is the next state? Next a symbol next symbol is again A. So, where it will go? It will go to Q2. After that again the symbol will go to the input reader will go to the next index position that is B ok. Where it will go? It will go to another state say suppose Q3. Then again the tape reader will go to here again B. So, again B then this is your Q4 ok. After that the tape reader will go to the last one that is your A. So, A will go to where? A will go to a a will go to a state ok and after this I am not designing right now as qf as the final state ok. Let me take this one I am just taking this as a normal state as of now ok. I am just taking as a normal state as of now ok ok and after this the tape header will reach we will reach what the last position of the input tape that means all the string has been read. So, that means qf can be designated with what as a final state. So, this is how the finite automata generally reads. Now, looking into this diagram we can say that from 
q naught that is the initial state the transition has started with the string a and finally at the final state that is q f the transition has ended. So, this is all about the general construction of a finite automata. Next class we will be starting off with the general construction of a DFA then how to design the transition diagram, how to design the transition table. Okay? So, I hope it is clear and finally, we can say that we have understood in today's lecture about what is automata categorizes as uh, acceptor or recognizer or transducer. Okay? This is uh, another part. Then we have seen what is the general configuration of an automata. It requires an input tape, it requires a finite control. Then we have seen what? We have seen the general formal description of a finite automata followed by DFA. Then we have understood the general structure of a DFA and then finally, we have also seen what are the general representation of a DFA, transition diagram and transition table. And then finally, I have tried to show it to you the general architecture of a finite automata. Okay? So, in the next video, we will come across with the proper designing of machines based on different types of languages where we will up come up we will where we will try to uh, sort out the designing process of a DFA and then we will follow it up with NFA process. So, thank you for watching this video. Thank you.